There are many people in our society today who claim to be Christians and hold dear to their faith in God. I'm from the great state of Texas. I served in the military. I go to church every Sunday. My faith is very important to me. However, the level of deception that those people are under is beyond anything you can imagine. God made me in her image. What do you mean by that? God made me transgender. There is something ontologically unique about manhood and about womanhood. And according to this new brand of Christianity, anyone and everyone is a Christian. Is President uh, Obama a Christian? Uh, yes. From popular reality TV stars such as Kim Kardashian. I had no idea that you guys were such hardcore Christians. Yeah, we grew up really Christian. Yes, but has your heart changed? To billionaires such as Oprah Winfrey. I, I am a Christian. That is my faith. Are you a new creature? But I did go to Sunday school for many years, I want to tell you. And from popular TV show hosts like Stephen Colbert. This relates to faith because my faith is involved with, I'm, I'm a Christian and a Catholic. To world-renowned hip-hop singer Nicki Minaj. I think just like faith in God. Even now, I'll speak to like my pastor and be like, can you just pray with me because I need some sort of guidance right now. Yes, but has your life changed? Is it changing? Those people are so deceived that they are completely and utterly blind to the truth. I can't see where the biblical principles of loving your neighbor and walking the walk with Christ that they can see. God who made them, made them male and female in his image. Most people in America at large claim to love God and hold dear to their Christian faith. I live in Tennessee. I am Christian. That's not what we stand for. I, I can't see what they're seeing right now because that's not of Christ. It's not. And as you will see throughout this video, the God that those people serve. God is real. The Jesus they claim to love. Do you love the Lord? You can't get where I get if you don't love the Lord. It is an idolatrous image they have concocted in their mind. I took God out of the box. Molded with their hands as it were and established over their life in place of the true and living God of the Bible. God is a feeling experience, not a believing experience. That's right. If you want to know whether someone is genuinely a Christian, a true believer, then you've got to go to the inside and you've got to start talking about something other than external material symbols. What marks a true believer is something that happens in the heart because a true believer has been born again, regenerated, transformed gone through a complete metamorphosis. I must tell you that the true test of a believer is not based on a simple profession of the lips without a transformed heart and mind. Oh, would you identify as Christian? Uh, yeah, yeah. It is imperative for you to know that the true test of a believer is not an emotional response to some Christian song. It is not a wash of adrenaline from some feel-good breakthrough wealth and success speech from a pulpit devoid of the word of God and the gospel that which alone saves. When you hold on to your history, you do it at the expense of your destiny. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, there are so many people in Christianity today who want the quick, fast track. They want the byproducts of a relationship with God without the relationship. That just hit me. Did that hit you? That hit me. Wow. They want the byproducts of salvation without salvation. They want the byproducts of repentance without repentance. They want forgiveness without repentance. They want salvation without submission. Whoa. This is a pump moment right here. <laughs> That's a, that's a church thing. That hit me. Yeah. Did yeah. that hit y'all? Yes. Far from all of that, my friends, the true test of a believer is found in the Christ-like character, the sanctified life, the God-honoring witness, both publicly and privately, of someone who has been made new by the power of the Holy Spirit and the sanctifying grace of the Word of God. We have a great majority of the people in America claiming to be Christian. I think just like faith in God. And they live like devils. And, you know, it's all about, you know, being the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. So I'm dressed as the devil. But because they claim to be Christian and they identify themselves with Christ and yet live like devils, God's name is not praised because of them. God's name is blasphemed because of them. And the reason why God's name is mocked, God's name is blasphemed because of them, it is because they have not truly been regenerated. It is because they have not truly been born again. It is because they have not truly been transformed. And if we ask the question, what marks that transformation, then we're getting to the reality of who is a true believer. I want to know, man. Are you gay? <laughs> yeah, gay bro. Only for Ronaldo. Yeah! Yeah! All right, all right, come, come, come. Listen, hold that, hold that, hold that. Hold on, hold on for a second. Hold on, hold on. I want to ask you something, what, 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 what? man. Listen, man. I know your father is a Christian. Okay. Are you a Christian? Am I a Christian? Okay. See, that's a very, you know, great question. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, let me ask you this. No, okay? no, no, no. Answer the question first. It's okay. a great question because a Christian is someone that's repentant of their sins. Why you always That doesn't support sexual immorality. That's not walking for fame, but living for Jesus. Someone who's denied themselves, pick up their cross daily and follow me. I'm not against you trying to make money okay, or right, making right, good okay. music, but if you're a Christian, you need to repent of your sins. Otherwise, just like any person here, not just you, you hey, need, okay, you'll find oh, yourself in hell. We are known by our character, by our affections, by the things that are important to us, precious to us. In a word, we are known by what we love. You can go around and claim to love God and give Him lip service all you want, but God will not be mocked. And true believers, Bible-believing, Christ-abiding, and Holy Spirit-filled Christians cannot in any shape or form love the things that the world loves, the pleasures that this culture indulges in. And the world constantly calls us to compromise our faith, our purity, and our gospel just for the sake of some temporary fleeting pleasure that will only satisfy the flesh just for a moment and then leave you in dark despair. That's the picture that our culture is blaspheming and calling us to blaspheme along with them and some Christians have decided that they will oblige. All right, okay, other way. So are you a hey, Christian? Hey, let me talk, all right? Are you a Christian? Okay, first of all, I came here to see Ronaldo. I'm in Manchester right now. You're asking me questions about God, okay? You know, I love God, you know, but... Just, just if you're I, but, hey, just no, if hey, you're hey, hey, hey. I want to know. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, let me tell you this. Stop talking to me, sir. Have a nice day. I thought I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. The man is gay for Ronaldo. His father's a Christian and he's afraid to acknowledge the question because he knows what I'm saying is right. He's going against his conscience. He loves his fame and he loves the world more than he loves God. He loves the fame and he loves the money more than he loves God. And he'll be gay for another man. You've heard it from his own lips. I'm here to tell you today, unless you repent, you will perish and find your way in hell. After all, the Bible clearly tells us in 1 John 2 15, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. That is not a suggestion or an opinion, my friend. This is an imperative, an order given to us straight from heaven. Since our citizenship is not from this earth, then we cannot operate like this world operates. We cannot live how they live and certainly love the things they love. Because our mandate is to not love the world, nor the things in the world. Why? Because if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away and also its lusts, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. And it's kind of a love letter to the place you now call home, the Big Apple. And some are actually calling this song an equality anthem because of the following lyrics. Let me read them. Quote, and you can want who you want, boys and boys and girls and girls. Is that the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Is that the behavior of a Christian? Not according to God's word, but according to the culture, if someone says they are a Christian, I live in Tennessee. I am Christian. Then you must accept it at all costs, regardless of what the Bible teaches. In America, being born again or the doctrine of regeneration has been totally and completely lost. People can't figure out how I got to be so successful. It is because I have lived in the space of spirit my whole life. My favorite Bible verse, because I am Christian, uh, is Acts something. <laughs> Regeneration is the supernatural work of God whereby by the Spirit of God He recreates a man if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you see that? The Bible says that God created the world ex nihilo, or out of nothing. I believe that there is more power of God manifested in the conversion of a man than in the very creation of the universe. Because as I said, he created the universe ex nihilo, out of nothing. But when he recreates a man and makes him a Christian, he takes a mass of radically depraved corruption and turns it into a new creature who will love him. One thing that is sure is the fact that everyone's hypocrisy will be laid bear one day and your unfruitful deeds of the dark will be brought to light. You are not going to fool God by claiming to be a Christian and live a life of licentiousness. Tell us what inspired the song. Uh, well, the song is inspired by what I love about New York, which is just kind of there's a freedom to um, 
and there's a celebration of being unique. Um, you know, and that was something that I was very inspired by. And also, I wrote the song. Um, I wrote the song kind of, kind of following the uh, when when gay marriage became legal in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that you know, it's, so many of my friends uh, had to be kind of scrutinized for who they were in love with. You know, from the time they came out, and I just. You know, I didn't want to make a big deal of it because I don't think it should be a big deal who you love. Mm -hmm. you know? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is from Taylor Swift, who claims to be a Christian. The rise of false and deceived Christians in America has not only grown exponentially, it has become the norm of American Christianity. I'm a practicing Catholic. I got married in the church two plus years. Uh, I don't see what we're doing in terms of advancing the bond of love and monogamy and extending that to families, families of same sex, in any way, shape or form, takes away anything from the church or the sanctity of the union that my wife and I have. I would just like to ask the mayor as a practic practicing Catholic, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? Yeah, look, Pastor, I'm not going to get in a theological debate with you. That no, would that's be not a theological debate. That's just a straight question. Do you believe the Bible is the authoritative word of God? Yeah, I, I, with respect, I guess I do. Now the response. Well, then the Bible says when God created man, he said one man, yeah. one woman cleave together for life. That's a family. Jesus in the New Testament reaffirms that. All the writers of the Old and the New Testament affirm it. Um, adultery, bestiality, homosexuality was punishable by death according to the Old Testament law because it was so serious in those early years because it literally shattered the hope of civilization. The, the New Testament offers us, of course, grace. Those sins are sins. They are forgivable. Jesus died to redeem us from those sins. We're all sinners. You don't want to categorize sin. But what does the state have to do but the the yeah. point at this juncture right. is, well, he's representing the state. He's That's coming back and saying, I'm a Catholic, and I'm a Catholic, and somehow this fits into my Catholicism, and I'm saying, well, what's your authority then? From music to movie stars, public figures to politicians and presidents alike, everyone seems to be a Christian, and you would be criticized if you are to question or scrutinize their faith against scripture. Do you believe that President Obama is a Christian? Well, I, th I think you have to ask uh, President Obama. Uh, you, you can ask me, do I believe you're a Christian? Um, I think the best thing for a person is to ask you directly. So I think people have to ask Barack Obama. He's come out saying that he's a Christian. So I, I think the question is, what is a Christian? <laughs> so you don't take him at his word when he says, I'm a Christian? No, of course I do. I was saying, I, I, every, you have to ask every person, but he has said he's a Christian, so I just have to assume you know, that he is. So therefore, by your definition, he's not a Christian? I mean, again, you have to ask him. Uh, I, ca I cannot answer that question for anybody. All I know is that I'm a sinner and that God has forgiven me of my sins uh, because I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's all I know. So Newt Gingrich is a Christian, yeah. but you're not sure that President Obama is. No, I'm, I, and this, you said based all, on the way they've lived their lives. All, all I know wow. is under, under Obama. <laughs> Uh, President, Obama. The, the, the President Obama, excuse me, you're correct. Uh, President Obama, the, 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 the Muslims of the world, uh, he seems to be more concerned about them than the Christians that are being murdered in the Muslim country. Interestingly enough, popular televangelist and celebrity pastor T.D. Jakes criticized Franklin Graham for holding Obama up to the standard of scripture. Reverend Franklin Graham has made some comments on several occasions, really questioning the faith, if you will, of the president. He said the president has told him that he's a Christian, but he basically said that going to church does not make you a Christian. But the president is on record as saying that he walked down that aisle, he gave his life to Christ. So what do you say? to folks like Reverend Graham, who frankly are mudding the water, but other people who are questioning the Christianity of this president. I find it insulting. We didn't question the Christianity of President Bush when he said he accepted Christ. And I, I, I'm disappointed in uh, Reverend Franklin Graham in that regard. I wish he had the diplomacy of his father who brought the gospel to people without being nuanced by politics. Uh, because when you do those things, you offend people that you're actually called to save and to serve. And uh, I, I, I would hope that he would see uh, the rationale uh, in, in apologizing for for such statements because if uh, the president's faith is suspect, then all of our faiths are suspect because the Bible is quite clear about what it takes to be saved and the president has been quite open about his accepting Christ and him openly confessing it before men and if it's good enough for the Bible, it ought to be good enough for the rest of us. I certainly agree with you on that. As stated by the TV host, since the president claimed to have walked down the aisle, he's prayed the prayer and goes to church every Sunday, then he must be a Christian. That 
ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is the hallmark of American Christianity. So many people today, I've been born again, they say. And you ask them, what do you mean by that? Well, I made my decision. I prayed that prayer. I asked Jesus to come into my heart. Yes, but has your heart changed? Has your life changed? Is it changing? Are you a new creature? Or someone who just repeated a creed and passed through a ritual? It doesn't really matter if your life reflects that of a redeemed believer. It doesn't really matter if you live like the world, walk like the world, talk like the world, drink like the world, and indulge in every lustful pleasure that the world indulges in. As long as you walk down that aisle, you raised your hand and made Jesus Lord of your life. As long as you go to church every Sunday, then you must be in the kingdom of God. Then you must be a Christian. That could not be any further from the truth. The evidence that you are truly converted is not that one time in your life you prayed a prayer and asked Jesus to come in. The evidence that you are converted is that one time in your life you repented of your sins and you continue repenting today. The evidence that you're saved is one time you believed unto salvation and you continue believing today. The evidence that you're converted is that one time God began a good work in you and he continues working in you today. Changing your life transforming you by His power. There are many popular, familiar symbols that Christians like to use to display their loyalty to Christ. From the ubiquitous and very popular cross, which is part of Christian jewelry and has been for centuries, to uh, the more modern t-shirts, uh, which can be emblazoned with all kinds of affirmations of our Christian faith and declarations concerning Christ all the way to those familiar and ubiquitous bumper stickers. And we all understand that those are, those are fine, that's, that's okay for us to, to give an open and bold testimony of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christian logos can, can be attached to many, many kinds of objects to identify our faith and can be actually helpful in drawing us perhaps into giving a Christian testimony. But at the same time, we understand that every car with a bumper sticker is not necessarily occupied by Christians. We understand that every neck wearing a cross is not necessarily a redeemed neck. We get that. And we also understand that uh, there are a lot of folks who can wear t-shirts that say a lot of things but may not be the truest and purest representation of what the people wearing them really are. We understand that you've got to go below the surface of any of those kinds of things, though they're fine. If you want to know whether someone is genuinely a Christian, a true believer, then you've got to go to the inside and you've got to start talking about something other than external material symbols. What marks a true believer is something that happens in the heart because a true believer has been born again, regenerated, transformed gone through a complete metamorphosis. And if we ask the question, what marks that transformation, then we're getting to the reality of who is a true believer. We are known by our character, by our affections, by the things that are important to us, precious to us. In a word, we are known by what we love. In fact, Perhaps the simplest explanation of a Christian comes in the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit, that is the evidence of the Spirit's presence, which is the evidence of transformation and regeneration and conversion. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and out of that flows joy, love, joy, and all the rest. A true born-again believer will be drawn to the truth of God's Word. But more importantly, true believers will submit to God's Word. They will obey God's Word and subject their life under the power of the Holy Spirit. They will not misrepresent the Word of God or the person of God. But one of the famous people in the world who claim to be a Christian is Oprah Winfrey. I, I am a Christian. That is my faith. And she has time and time again misrepresented God, misrepresented Scripture, and even created her own God. Listen to this clip in which she explains how she perceives God the idol she created and serves and bases her Christianity on. In reading books such as Tolly's, I've really op it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christian Christianity. So my question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled 
these spiritual teachings with your Christian belief? Uh, I've reconciled it because I was able to open my mind about the, um, the absolute indescribable hugeness of that which we call God. Um, I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief sy systems and doctrine. And um, I happened to be um, sitting in church in my late 20s and I was going to this church where you had to get there at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning or you couldn't get a seat and a very uh, charismatic minister and everybody was just, you know, into the sermon. And uh, this great uh, minister was preaching about how great God was and how omniscient and omnipresent and God is everything. And then he said, and the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And I was, you know, caught up in the rapture of that moment until he said jealous. And something struck me. Just, and I was like, uh, I think about 27 or 28. I was thinking, God is all, God is omnipresent, God is all. And God's also jealous, jealous, God is jealous of me. Um, and something about that didn't, didn't feel right in my spirit because I believe that God is love and that God is in all things. And so that's when the, the, the search for something more than doctrine uh, started to stir within me. And I love this quote that uh, Eckhart has. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes in uh, chapter one, where he says, man made God in his own image, the eternal, the infinite and unnameable was reduced to a mental idol that you had to believe in and worship as my God or you our are, God. Jesus says you are the light of the world. That means you are the consciousness in which the world appears, is seen. So you believe what happens to us at death when the body dies? I you don't, don't have a belief. I don't give it any thought. You don't. God, in the essence of all consciousness, isn't something to believe. God is. Yes. God is. Oprah's God will ultimately lead her to hell. Her version of Christianity will condemn her for eternity if she does not repent and turn away from her idolatrous path. And that is just one of many examples of how professing Christians see God and live their life. They worship a God made in their image, their preferences, biases, and even their sin. Many of you were raised here. Many of you were born in the West. And you need to be very, very careful this Christianity is not a cultural thing. This Christianity is, is not something that just should be a small part of your life. It is not something that you do on Sunday. Christianity is not about you living in the world six days a week and coming to church. Christianity is not about you being just like the world all the time and then coming to church on Sunday. If that is your Christianity, you have no Christianity. You are not Christian. It is a dangerous thing to be raised in a Christian family. It is a dangerous thing to be raised in a Christian community because you may think that somehow because your parents are Christian, you are Christian. Or because you come from a group of people who have suffered that you too participate in that glory. That is not true. Young people, let me ask you a question. How do you know that you're Christian? How do you know that you have truly come to know Christ? How do you know that if you died right now, you would go to heaven and be accepted by God Almighty before his throne? How do you know? You say, well, it's all of grace. Yes, it is all of grace. We are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. We are saved by believing the promises of the gospel. That is true. But what you need to understand is grace is a powerful thing. That he who has given you grace to repent and believe gives you grace to continue repenting and to continue believing. He who gives you grace to believe unto justification also will give you grace for your sanctification. That you might grow in holiness. As a matter of fact, listen to me. 
One of the greatest evidences that you have truly believed in Christ unto salvation is that God has begun a good work of sanctification in you. He works and works and works to make you holy. Now, let me ask you, is that a reality in your life? Young choir behind me, let me ask you a question. You sing beautifully. But can you honestly tell me that your great desire is to be holy? Can you honestly tell me that your great desire is not to be like the world, to not be like what you see here in the West and many other places, but to be like Jesus Christ? Can you tell me that? Because if you cannot, you should be afraid. You should be very afraid. Those who love the world, do not have the love of the Father. And my question for you at this point in the video is this. Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Are you on your way to heaven? Have you counted the cost of what it means to follow Jesus Christ? Have you tallied up the pain, the persecution, the shame that comes with being a true believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Look, you don't go to war without counting the cost. You don't build a tower without counting the cost. You understand what the Lord is asking. He's asking for your life, for your whole life. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. If you say, this is going to cost me my family, then let it cost you your family, your father, your mother, your wife, your husband, your sister, your brother, your friends. If it means you have to be persecuted even to a cross, let it be. But you deny yourself and all other things and follow me. This person wants to do it right, counts the cost, learns the right way, and willingly submits. He is emptied of self-righteousness. He is emptied of self-sufficiency. He digs way down. He knows he has nothing commendable. He's overwhelmed with his sin. He makes the maximum effort in the Lord's strength to place the Word in his heart. He's interested in genuinely submitting to Christ and loving Christ. He longs to know the Word in order that he might obey the Word. He doesn't want to know the Word so he can wow the ignorant. He wants to know the Word so he can compel his own soul into a life of obedience. If you have not counted the cost, my friend, now is the time for you to do that. Today is the day for you to decide whether you will walk with Christ or walk with the world, whether you will turn away from God and turn to the lusts of your flesh, whether you will surrender your life totally and completely to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is very important, very important. In America, in typical American contemporary evangelicalism, what do we have? I'll tell you what we have. We have a great majority of the people in America claiming to be Christian and they live like devils. I had no idea that you guys were such um, hardcore Christians. Yeah. Um, do you and Kanye have Bible studies just by yourselves? We don't. I mean, we'll send each other like different biblical verses and he'll, he'll, he'll definitely come to church. Mm -hmm. He'll love it um, when we're there. You know, I think we're more spiritual. Mm -hmm. I think we really believe in like the afterlife and heaven and just really spiritual. Yeah. And um, our, my whole family is. And we just live our lives like that. We just try to be good people and respect other people and mm -hmm. be kind. Well, that's a Christian. And that is, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, really, we grew up really Christian. Yeah. And our kids are raised that way. Mm -hmm. We read the Bible with them daily, mm -hmm. um, like a kid's Bible, and awesome. they love it. Aww. And that's like their bedtime stories, and just that's how we were raised. Yeah. So They claim to be Christian, and they identify themselves with Christ, and yet live like devils. God's name is not praised because of them. God's name is blasphemed because of them. This relates to faith, because my faith is involved with, I'm, I'm a Christian and a Catholic. But the question comes down, does everybody in America who says they're Christian, are they Christian? Absolutely not. There's also huge news right now uh, from the land down under, where Australians have voted overwhelmingly in favor of allowing same-sex marriage. Yes! Good for you, Mike. Very exciting news. Very exciting, finally. Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. And herein is the problem. 
When a church lowers the standard of the gospel in order to get more people to come in, when a church does not preach on holiness and what it means to be truly converted, then Christianity in the church fills up with a lot of ungodly people and because of their actions, the unbelieving world blasphemes the name of God. But what we need to understand is that the people who claim to know Christ and yet live in a way that contradict the word of Christ and the character of Christ, they are not Christian. For the 25 years that I have known you, mm -hmm. right? Everybody that knows that you played a role in my life yeah. in the church, <laughs> yeah. the number one question, they were mm -hmm. like, yo, is, is Will a man of faith? Does really? he love the Lord? <laughs> I'm like, yes. Okay, so but I want, yeah. them, I want you to hear you, from the you horse's mouth. You, are you, you a man of faith? You can't Do you get, love the Lord? You can't get where I get if you don't love the Lord. Exactly. You don't, you don't get to sit how I sit and move how I move if you right. don't love the Lord. Exactly. Uh, yeah, okay. you know, you, you'd be seeing a whole lot of other repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of repercussions, that same year after Will Smith, who claimed to love the Lord, slapped Chris Rock, an old friend of his, on stage on national TV during the Oscars for millions to view. And on top of that, he cussed at him multiple times. Keep my wife's name out your no! All of that for a simple joke. It was a G.I. Jane joke. And by the way, all of this happened after revelations that Will Smith and his wife, Jada Pickett Smith, had an open marriage which they did not seem to have a problem with and actually planned it. We agreed that she had to make herself happy and I had to make myself happy. And then we were going to present ourselves back to the relationship. We ride together. We, we die, die together. together. Bad marriage for life. <laughs> pretty clear that Will Smith does not love the Lord. It is pretty clear that he is not a Christian. And as stated by Paul Washer, there are millions of people, even billions of people who claim to love Jesus Christ. They profess to love God, but in all reality, they are haters of Christ and lovers of self and sin. We are saved by faith alone. We are not saved by works. But what you need to understand is that a person who has been truly saved has been born again. They have become a new creature. God has done a tremendous work in them to demonstrate His power. He has made them into new creatures with new affections, new desires to serve Christ and to be holy. Has He done that to you? Let me ask you a question. Do you look at the world and long to be like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, dress like the world, have the world's respect and the world's esteem. If you're that way, you ought to be terrified because that just could be evidence that God has not done a work in you. If God's power cannot be seen in your life, leading you to greater and greater holiness, then maybe there is no power of God in your life that he has not regenerated your heart. You are not born again. You are not a Christian. Because he says, I am going to save people. Why? To demonstrate to the world how powerful I am, not only in saving their souls, but in transforming their lives. Is God transforming your life? Christians are not sinless. Christians are not perfect. Christians will struggle with sin and Christians can even fall. But in the midst of that weakness, it will be evident that God is working, God is teaching, God is disciplining, and God is bringing them to greater and greater heights of Christian maturity and holiness. Is that you? Since you professed faith in Christ, are your desires for Christ growing? Are your desires for holiness growing? Is God's power in transforming your life evident? Are you becoming less and less like the world and more and more like Christ? Or are you becoming more and more 
like the world? Those are the questions that every professing Christian needs to reflect on today. I don't want you to be deceived into thinking that you are God's people, but in all reality, you are on your way to damnation. I don't want that for you, my friend. Hence why I am warning you, calling you to repentance and begging you to examine your life. The Apostle Paul pressed the Corinthians to examine themselves. In 2 Corinthians 13 verses 5 through 9, Paul writes, Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize about yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test. But I hope that you realize that we ourselves do not fail the test. Now we pray to God that you do no wrong. Not that we ourselves may appear approved, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear unapproved. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray for that you be restored. And the truth will not be revealed until the storm comes. What is the storm? It's the day of judgment. The rain descended, verse 25, and the floods came, the winds blew and burst against the house. The same thing is described exactly in verse 27. The first house did not fall. It was founded on the rock. The second house fell. Great was its fall. This is divine judgment. This is the final judgment. And the ultimate question that every believer will always have to face every single day of their life is this. Are you a true believer? Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Because one day the truth will be laid bare and that day will be the day of judgment. The day of judgment will come when people will say, Lord, Lord, it's us. To which he will confess, homologeo, depart from me. I never knew you, you who continue to practice lawlessness. Over and over we are reminded in the Bible that all of the deeds of the dark will be brought to light on the day of judgment. Divine justice will be meted out one way or another. There is nothing hidden from the gaze of Yahweh. The psalmist says in Psalm 11, Yahweh is in his holy temple. Yahweh's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. Yahweh tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Listen, you may be respectful of Christ, you may have orthodox views about Christ, you may see yourself as fervent and zealous, you may be active in some level of devotion to the church, you may make a public proclamation, you may be busy building your little religious house adjacent to all the others built by those around you, you, you may be deceived only to have your house smashed to a million pieces in judgment. Know for certain, my friend, that your sin will find you out. Now is the time to stop pretending to be a Christian. You may fool people in your circle, your neighbor, your mom, your dad, your husband, or your wife, but you will not fool God. Go back, dear friend, and check your foundation. Go back and check your foundation. If the foundation of your faith is built on sin, which represents a false Christianity, then your house will not stand on the day of judgment. The waters of the wrath of God will come and it will be blown to pieces. But if the foundation of your faith is built on Christ, the solid rock, and your life is a faithful and truthful testimony of that, then your house will stand firm on the day of judgment. Now let me ask you this. What is the foundation of your spiritual house? What is the foundation of your faith, my friend? Is it religiosity, rituals, and devotions without a true commitment to Jesus Christ? If that is the case, then you are in grave danger. And I call you to repent today. Commit yourself to Christ truly and fully because the judgment of God is imminent and his judgment will start in the church. Are you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Are all your false and fake and deceived Christian? Lastly, if you find yourself to be on the broad road that leads to destruction, if you find yourself on the way that leads to hell, don't despair because there is hope. Don't despair because there is life in Jesus Christ. He can make you whole again. He can wash away your sin. He can take away the pain and the shackles of your iniquity. You simply need to repent of your sin and put your trust in Him and Him alone today. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So to those who are 
working and straining and wrestling to earn the favor of God. Be still and know that he is God. Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. To those of you who think that you're so wise that you don't need God, repent. Acknowledge the folly of your dependence on human wisdom and flee to Christ. To all under the sound of my voice, Christ is our only hope. Be found in Him and live. This is it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you'd like to have one of those t-shirts, subscribe to our Patreon. We are giving them out for free to all of our Patreon members as a token of our appreciation for your support and prayers. Make sure to follow us on Rumble because you never know when YouTube might take this channel down. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, with love in Christ, your brother John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.